by reading from the book of Second Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 5. Behold, saith the Adabwan Yahweh the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Now, first and foremost, as always, I want to start this lesson off by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash, Kol Holal Yimla, Allah Yanawa, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Waha Racha, Kodash. Yahweh be the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Pili Hebrew tongue, which means He is, He to be, He exists, Bahasham, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, which means He is salvation, He is the deliverer. Bahasham, Raka Kodash, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Sincere honor, salutation, and respect, and other sincere elders, apostles, bishops, teachers of GMS, Great Millstone, as well as the like minded elders and brothers under the umbrella, pushing the truth of sincerity, all in one accord across the four winds of the earth, risking your lives and freedoms to do so, making your bodies burnt offering and living sacrifice in the names of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. So to you all, I say Shalom, or Yahweh Bahashim Mashiach Brakatam, and Yahweh Bahashim Mashiach Brakatam. Peace and salutations unto the sincere hearted men, women, and children of the hopeful life remnant, the hopeful house of David, consisting of the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Haitians, West Indians, Seminole Indians, and Israelite foreigners scattered abroad, deriving from the seed line of our forefather Jacob through Abraham and Isaac. You make up the 12 tribes of Israel that the Bible speaks of. May you seek repentance and salvation in these latter days, and the blessing of election be upon the sincere hearted of Yasharala. Okay, so again. Second Ezra 15 and 5, Behold, saith the Adam, Yahweh the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Because right? that's what we are seeing in these very perilous times that we're in, and the continuous judgments that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is bringing forth day in and day out, round the clock, nonstop judgment. However, all these things are for the re uh, betterment of the remnant, the elect, because we are that much closer to the kingdom of heaven, a righteous kingdom, right? starting here on the earth, okay? Uh, is going to be restored in righteousness and in truth under Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, right? And we are that much closer to it taking place. So I pray this lesson may be edifying, comforting, and exhorting because we see these times and many who are outside of, of, of our people that are outside of the circumcision or even those who may be within the circumcision yet still are not taking heed or applying themselves to the best of their ability, applying this word really, this truth. Yeah, they're going to look at the things that are taking place in the earth and then are going to befall the earth and they're going to be confounded. They're going to be without without this comfort that, that comes with understanding the times that we're in, these very prophetic times. So let's go on to the sixth verse where it says, For wickedness has hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful, hurtful works are fulfilled. So like it. So again, it has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, right? Because there's a, an abundance of wickedness Right, that's that's uh, befalling the earth, and, and that's continuously taking place. Right, our people are continuously abounding in in folly and abominable abominations, right, and so on and so forth, and, and everything that's being pushed. Right, Esau of Edom, first and foremost. Right, the wicked, the wicked, the devil that the Bible speaks of, which is a so-called white man, that goes back to the seed line of Esau of Edom. It's not according to appearance. But according to all those that derive from that seed line, right? Okay, so and all the other heathen nations, the other 16 heathen nations in total, 17, that continuously push abominations and wickedness upon the earth, right? And they keep our people in a perpetual state of, of captivity, right? But again, their hurtful works are fulfilled, right? Because they have a lot. It is their lot to be the wicked, as the scriptures speak of the vessels of honor, the vessels of dishonor, right? So their hurtful works are being fulfilled, right? That is their lot. And let's slide over to the book of Isaiah, the 36th, uh, 32nd chapter, Isaiah 32, verse 6. It says, For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error. That's right, against the Adawan Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's right, because they continuously speak evil against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his only begotten son and this truth, the believers, so on and so forth. So again, they're going to vilify they're going to demonize they're going to persecute and we're entering those times where you know those who are believing on and teaching this word are, are going to be at a, a heightened state of scrutiny right and continue on it says and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy so right, so iniquity be sin upon sin lawlessness not according to the laws of your bashim Shai, and to practice hypocrisy right because they're utter hypocrites right when it comes to esau and just one example being a uh, 
you know, the international community looking at the state of Israel, the little hats, the Israelis, and what's taking place over there in the conflict with the uh, quote unquote Palestinians, right? And in the Gaza Strip and whatnot, right? So you have the U.S. that's funding and, and arming these individuals and whatnot, but yet they're committing, uh, you know, they're committing uh, what the international community may deem as, as crimes against humanity and so on and so forth, right? But uh, again, they're, they're funding it on one side and they're arming them on one side and then they're trying to speak as if they're trying to lead them and encourage them to, to a ceasefire, so on and so forth, right? So that's a, just one aspect of that hypocrisy. Now, continuing on again, and they speak into utter error against Adwan Yahweh the Lord and to make empty the soul of the hungry and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail, right? And in particular, our people, right? Again, to make the, the empty of the, empty the soul of the hungry, right? Because they're looking to make it empty by depriving us of, of not only these carnal necessities, you know, but also of the word of this truth, right? And it says, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. That's right. This living water, right? The bread of life and the living water. Isaiah 32 and 7. The instruments also of the true are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. That's right. So again, uh, as the scriptures say, he that departeth from from wicked or iniquity, you know, he shall make himself a prey, just paraphrasing it. Right. So when you depart from iniquity, you turn away from evil, right? You become a prey, right? You become an adversary, right? Naturally so, because again, the as this book of Job 9 and 24 reads, it says the, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. I'm also going to turn over to uh, Psalm 37 and 7. Rest in Ha'adawan Yahweh the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So in the term device goes into a scheme, a plot. Right. So, again, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. So these hurtful works are being fulfilled. This uh, wickedness is exceedingly polluting the whole earth. Yet we will make well, I don't want desire, Lord willing, Lord pleasing. We will remain patient in our wait for the return of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Messiah, our Lord and Savior. So, again, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Right. So these things, these these individuals who seem to be prosperous in this carnal temporal sense. Right. For a temporary state of time, right? Everything that they're accomplishing and their wickedness and and their wicked endeavors, right? The heavenly Father is putting them up to that, whether it be one thing or another, right? The heavenly Father is allowing everyone to to fulfill their lot because ultimately it's going to come to judgment. It's going to lead to judgment. So whether it be one person that's getting away with this, one another person that's getting away with that, you know, a group of individuals. Mm, thinking that they're accomplishing their narrative, it's really the Heavenly Father that's allowing them to fulfill their lot and 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 uh, they're going to have a hefty bill to pay, right? So again, man, Heavenly Father is keeping keeping tabs. He's, he's got receipts and, and everyone's going to have a bill to pay, right? So let's also grab this out of the book of Job, the fifth chapter, NLT version, New Living Translation. And it says he frustrates the plan, uh, verse 12, Slakia, Job 5 and 12, NLT. He frustrates the plans of schemers, so the work of their hands will not succeed. That's right, man. So again, these these people, these individuals are continuously thinking they're going to fulfill a, a scheme or a plot, right, uh, of a plan. Yet, you know, Heavenly Father knows all, sees all, and has already predestined it from the foundations of the world. So, of course, their, their failures are also and written before time right are already designed by the heavenly father so verse 13 he traps the wise in their own cleverness so their cunning schemes are thwarted that's right man they're overthrown right they will not come to fruition in their totality right because again he's trapping them in their own cleverness right you know his his thoughts are not our thoughts right his thoughts are higher than our thoughts just paraphrasing some of the scriptures right because again, the Heavenly Father knows all, and his as the scriptures, uh, I believe it's the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, it says there is no searching of his understanding. Now, verse 14, they find it is dark in the daytime, and they grope at noon as if it were night, right? Because they're really the Heavenly Father's got them in the trick bag, right? The Heavenly Father's got them in the trick bag, and they're just fulfilling a lot, a role, right? As in as in film and 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 playwrights and so on and so forth. You have an antagonist, a protagonist, right? The antagonist being Esau of Edom, and and uh, the protagonist being you know Yahweh Shai, 
Wah, our forefather Jacob, Israel, Yasha Allah, Israelites, right? Okay. So let's uh, let's slide back now to the book of uh, Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter. Okay, now let's go to the seventh verse. It says, therefore, saith the Lord, I will ho hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things. So I can zoom in a little bit. So I can just one second. And it says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit neither will i suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves behold the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually right and because we are constantly complaining to the lord right constantly crying uh, uh sending up lamenting right sending up our prayers to the heavenly father right so on and so forth so again that is that righteous blood right aforetime as well our people, you know, this is a, a land, you know, the earth in, in general really is defiled with the blood of the Israelites, our people, right? All the things that have taken place, you know, throughout throughout our time here on earth because of these different atrocities and captivities that we've gone into. Now, of course, that is, there's a necessary judgment. There's a necessary correction for our people. There's necessary, you know, the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and for everything that we've done against the Heavenly Father aforetime and to this very day. But again, uh, the righteous, right? So the Israelites who are crying out to the Heavenly Father and coming back in truth and sincerity to the best of our ability to serve the Lord, right? And again, the, the that innocent blood is crying unto the Lord, right? So again, the souls of the just uh, complain continually, right? We're constantly, again, sending up our prayers, lamenting, right? And we see that the, 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 the Heavenly Father is working a mighty work in the earth. And that now we more than ever are we seeing that the heavenly father is visiting the earth as we'll go into i don't know the that now it says right here in verse nine and therefore says out of one yahweh the lord i will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them that's right because again a fourth time as well right constantly sending up prayers and, and praying that the heavenly father will avenge us right because we are not to avenge ourselves pursuant to the scriptures right it says vengeance belong to out of one yahweh the lord right but also we are redeemed right by what by the blood of our lord and savior Hamashiach now let's slide over down to the book of exodus the 15th chapter exodus 15 and 9 the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my lust shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them right so pharaoh for a time our people you know being in captivity uh, under the, you know, in the land of Egypt, ancient Egypt, right? And Pharaoh and whatnot hardened his heart. The Heavenly Father had him, had his heart hardened uh, against them to not let our people go, right? And to try to try his best to keep us in a perpetual state of slavery. However, that was all to the will of the Heavenly Father to bring him down and show his might, show his power, and show his mercy upon our people. So that, yeah. So now continuing on in Exodus 15 and 10, where it says, Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters, right? Because everything that the Heavenly Father did to bring those plagues upon ancient Egypt, and then ultimately parting uh, the Red Sea, and then uh, Pharaoh and, and the, you know, the chariots, the horses, his men, so on and so forth, all were, uh, they all perished uh, in that time right after creating a safe passage after granting safe passage for our people so continuing on now in verse 11 it says who is like unto thee o adawan yahweh the lord among the gods who is like unto thee glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders thou stretchest out thy right hand the earth swallowed them thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. So, so again, we are praying that the Heavenly Father continuously have that, that mercy upon us again, as it is said, right? Okay, when uh, 2nd Ezra 15 9 again, where it says, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them, right? So again, we are praying that the Heavenly Father will avenge us and, and we know pursuant to the promise, the covenant, that that will be so. Uh, in particular, starting first and foremost with the remnant, the elect, right? Move over to Nehemiah chapter 1, and verse 8. 
It says, remember, I beseech thee. So I will beseech, meaning to beg, to plead with. I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations, which took place, right, transgressing the word of the Lord. Verse 9 says, but if ye turn to me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, right, the, the gathering of the remnant, the elect, by way of the holy chariots, starting with our Lord and Savior, through the powers of the Heavenly Father. It says, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. That's right, in the right hand of the Heavenly Father, speaking of Amashiach, Yamashiach, right? So again, the servants and thy people, again, a possessive term, right? Speaking of the Hebrew Israelites, our people, right? So now let's slide back over to 2 Ezra. This is uh, chapter 15 and verse 10. It says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Right. So it's not speaking of ancient Egypt. Um, this is this is a future prophecy. Right. When it was written at the time. So this is speaking of spiritual Egypt, which is Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America which goes by many names within the scriptures, right? Many parables and references to America by many different names, whether it be Basra, Adumia, um, Tyrus, you know, Nineveh, you, 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 you name it. There's, there's a lot, uh, you know, Assyria. I mean, Egypt, spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritually Egypt, right? So there's many mysteries of the kingdom as the scriptures speak of, right? Okay, mysteria on the hidden things, but also these dark sayings, these parables, right? So that is, again, speaking of, of America, modern day, right? So again, then these these plagues are, are definitely coming upon upon the land, coming upon the earth. Now, continuing on, again in Second uh, Ezra fifteen and eleven, but I will bring them with the mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High, that God shall bring upon it. That's right. And this, this place is continuously getting plagued, right? In many different ways, you know, these and, and the earth for that much as well, right? Which I'll get into in a few different articles and whatnot and some 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 points, you know, some points to reference. Now we'll continue on in verse 13. It says, They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hail and with a fearful constellation. That's right. So again, that the the hail right all these different calamities that are going to befall the earth these different plagues that are hitting the earth right you know these things are are ultimately um for the betterment of the remnant the elect once again because these must needs be for the ushering in of the righteous kingdom of heaven right the righteous kingdom of yahweh verse 14 says woe to the world and them that dwell therein right destruction and again we are speaking uh, these plagues and destruction these calamities right Let's go into the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse one. It says he answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest shall begin, else like it will begin to visit the world which he made." That's right, and that term "visit" goes into "punish," right? A visitation, a punishment, right? It says, "Therefore," verse three it says, "Therefore when." There shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, right? We'll pause there, right? Because again, earthquakes in diverse places, uproars of the people. Now, let's go ahead and start with, um, you know, these storms and whatnot, right? That just recently swept through through Babylon here, right? A CNN uh, weather reporting: severe storms lashed central and eastern U.S., dumping rain, softball-sized hail, and threatening tornadoes, right? Just within this these last few days this week right so it says uh, parts of texas all the way to illinois were drenched monday even evening as severe thunderstorms marched through the central and eastern u.s dumping hail larger than softballs in some areas and unleashing fierce winds of more than 70 miles per hour 
threat, man. So again, these these different storms and tornado watches and so on and so forth, right? So it says the storms are also threatening large swaths of the region with dangerous tornadoes. And at least three tornado watches were issued for Monday night, covering more than six million people, right? One covers much of Oklahoma, including Oklahoma City and Tulsa and parts of northern Texas through Monday night. OK, so, yeah, the second tornado watch was issued for southeastern Kansas, western Missouri, a third for eastern Missouri and central Illinois. And even further down here, it says, and there's more severe weather expected Tuesday, which was again earlier this week, when the threat shifts east and places of the Ohio Valley under a level four or five risk where a quote unquote substantial severe weather outbreak is possible. Right. So, again, it's all videos, clips on it, so on and so forth. And again, so these. uh so again, when it says visit the earth, which it made, talked about it, and also uh, upwards of the people, but let's, let's stick on this earthquakes topic, right? So I'm going to refresh this being the uh, United States Geographical Survey, USGS.gov, where you can look up uh, different information, okay? And uh, this right here <laughs> up north, right? Which, which I'll actually pull up uh, another reference to this as well. Because right now, as you see, uh, 3.4 just rocked Berkeley, right? Up in California, 3.4, right? So again, this is all like more or less in real time, right? So 4.8 you had in Taiwan, which was again, just got rocked. That was earlier, or just a few hours ago, right? 5.1, which I believe is Papua New Guinea. Yep, 5.1 Papua New Guinea. You had, this is uh, Northern Mariana Islands at 4.8, right? Another one hit Taiwan at a four, uh, five point two, right? So this is all just within like the past twenty four hours right here, right? Indonesia got hit with a five point oh, four point five in Russia. Okay, so just like I said, you can check it out on the USGS.gov. Looks like China got hit with a five point oh, right? Of course, what took place in, in Japan, as you see here, right? Okay, 4.7 hit Japan, 5.4 hit Japan. And that's at, uh, just just a couple days after they got rocked with a seven-pointer, right? And that and let me to reference uh, the Northern California, right? Where just a few days ago, this was uh, two days ago, right? This is Insider Paper reporting seven earthquakes, including a magnitude 4.4 strike Northern California. Right. So they got rocked with multiple uh, earthquakes just within the past few days. Now, let's take a look now. And again, as I referenced, the 7.4 earthquake. OK, they hit Taiwan, it says the strongest in 25 years. Right. They also had a tsunami warning issue. Right. Let's take a look at this type of calamity that the Heavenly Father is bringing down. Yep. So obviously a visitation of the earth, visitation of the world. Right, I just see here as well another view of the landslide. Right, I'm gonna slide over again. Another view here. Blow this up. All right, so we get the point. All right. So now let's get back to uh, Slackio. Okay, now Salaki, I was back in second edge just nine, Salaki for that. Yeah, second edge just nine. Now I'll repeat three. It says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things 
from the days that were even before thee, even from the beginning, right? Declaring the end from the beginning, as the scriptures say, just paraphrasing. Now it says, verse 5, for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So, and these are the signs that we're looking for, these effects. And again, the Heavenly Father is manifesting this all for the remnant, the, the elect's sake, right? And the Wadi Yabashim that we may be of that number, Lord's will. Sliding back to Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter. So this is Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, and verse fifteen. Now it says, "I'll bring that to the top." Now it says, "For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands." Right? Because speaking of a brewing civil war, right? You have all these racial tensions and and whatnot. These even if it's political ba politic politically based. Right. You know, uh, uh, those who are team Biden, team Trump, you know, or the, some that don't like any of them, so on and so forth. Right. So you have those type of tensions brewing up. But also you have um, even the, the situation now across the world. Right. It's being heightened, you know, here in, in Babylon, the great here in America due to these uh, open borders, if you will. Right. These situations with these, quote unquote, migrants, you know, and and. The crimes that are being committed and so on and so forth the influx if you will and tax money that's being allocated to house them to pay for this that and the third all the money that's being shelled out in these proxy wars and conflicts money that's being shelled out to the ukraine and israel so on and so forth right and i mean the state of israel right the little hats but the point being is that they see that more and more that that you know with this hyperinflation and so on and so forth things are getting very bad here to a point where Again, it's ultimately going to lead to race wars and riots and civil war, so on and so forth, right? So again, that destruction draws nigh, draws near. Again, when it says uh, one people shall stand up and fight another and swords in their hands. So killing instruments, weapons, whether it be guns, you know, and again, instruments of war and, and, and whatnot, right? So continuing on in uh, verse 16, Second Ezra 15 and 16, it says, For there shall be sedition among men. Right, sedition going into uproars and, and inciting violence and, and uh, you know, going against the government, if you will, just for lack of better terms. Right. So that's more or less inciting uh, people to to come up against rebel against the government. So, again, there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their king kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. That's right. So again, the course of their actions shall stand in their power because the Heavenly Father is going to allow them to go ahead and uh, and commit, the, you know, whatever it is that they feel is, you know, right in their eyes, right? The Heavenly Father is going to, that's if that's within their lot, right? The Heavenly Father is going to allow them to to commit, you know, whatever type of cr violent crimes or or so on and so forth that's that, that they seem fitting for for the for the time if you will just for again a lack of better terms right and we're seeing more and more of that as well right as i'll pull up here this is recently reported now uh just a couple days ago uh, in fact yesterday slakia slakia so forget my days here so this right here report senator bernie sanders office in vermont caught fire arson is suspected right so this is a suspected arson well this if this is to be true and whatnot right that is a form of sedition right that is a form of, of individuals rebelling against the government. And you see that across the world as well. We see Reuters.com uh, reports just a few days ago, Russian Arctic governor survives stabbing attack. And it says the governor of Russia's Arctic region of Murmansk, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, survived a stabbing attack. Okay. And investigators said on Friday that they had arrested a man with a criminal record who said he committed the assault out of dislike for the official. Right. So it says, and that's pretty much the point. And it says, yeah, lawmaker Alexander Kinstein, Kinstein said the governor, Andre Chibis or Chibi, Chibi was saved by a National Guardsman who fired a warning shot in the air and then grabbed the attacker, wounding him in the leg and wrenching him away. Right. But the point being, again, another form of sedition, right? Individuals coming up against the government, right? As you see here as well, a protest in Tel Aviv. Right. Where where the you know, many of the people over there, I'm sure many of them 
if not the vast majority of them, little hats, right? Uh, protesting against Netanyahu. Many of them are calling for the resignation of Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, right? And also you see here now, this is reportedly uh, taped in 2023, early 2023, but it came across the feed. So I figured I'd throw it in just for context. As you see here, many Canadians are upset and they're, they're protesting and they're obviously displaying their displeasure with prime minister Justin Trudeau. So you get the point, right? Obviously, clearly upset, clearly not happening. Clearly not happening, right? But you see that as well. This is a this is what uh, a result of mass protests and very uh, lengthy protests, many different forms all across Europe, right? Okay, where uh, they were looking into Usher and the Green Deal, right, which had a, a major effect on farmers, right, and whatnot. And there was months and months of of different forms of protests, and some got very uh, violent as well. You know, you had individuals being shot at, being you know, uh, different, different, uh, you know, they were dumping loads of fertilizer and, and they were dumping all kinds of different forms of trash. You know what I mean? And, and again, police were lighting up these protesters and, and, and many different um, protests across, whether it be Spain, the Netherlands, uh, France, you know, I mean, you name it, right? There was protests uh, in many different areas of Europe over the past, you know, couple of years. But um, the one, one snippet I wanted to get so more or less what they did was just to kind of summarize this is that they over they didn't vote in certain aspects of it right where it says it says a major european union plan to better protect nature in the 27 nation block and fight climate change was indefinitely postponed monday underscoring how farmers protests sweeping the continent has had have had a deep influence on politics right so again there was um crazy amounts of protest and and they were hit at hey heavy at it, slap you up, getting tongue twisted for a long time, right? But let's get the point here. One particular snippet that I wanted to bring up was says, the change of heart follows weeks of relentless protests from farmers across the block who have argued the re that reams of environmental laws governing the way that they work are driving them toward bankruptcy at a time when food security and self-sufficiency are becoming essential again as Russia's war on Ukraine rages on. Right, because because the Ukraine was was uh, prior to this conflict was a major producer of grain, right, and and whatnot. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of effects that it's having on, on the world for that much, right? So again, and uh, I'll just kind of summarize it there. And now going back to the precept of Second Ezra, the 15th chapter once again. Now it says, for there shall be sedition, uh, 15 and 16, Second Ezra 15, 16, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard the king nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. That's right. So they're going to be able to do what the Heavenly Father has them, you know, predestined to do. Right. So they're not going to have regard for their local police, their local politicians. Right. You know, federal, whatever, so on and so forth. They're not going to have a reverence for them. Right. Verse 17 says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, right? These 15 minute cities and, and uh, you know, these National Guard troops and, and martial law checkpoints, so on and so forth, man. And ultimately the mark of the beast, right? The RFID microchip, right? It's Neuralink, everything that's being developed, the ushering in of this digital infrastructure, right? Everything that's taking place here in these latter days. So again, verse 18 now says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. That's right. Because again, civil war, race wars, riots, 
complete lawlessness, say, quote unquote, anarchy, right? Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy, I'm blow this up. Second Corinthians 15, 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's right. So it's going to be, again, survival of the fittest, quote unquote, right? And and they're going to have complete disregard, you know, and, and whatnot because of everything that's going to be taking place on the earth, right? They're going to be looking to take care of themselves and those that immediately pertain unto them, right? So again, they're not going to have any time. They're not going to feel any type of way, right? Ultimately, they're just going to do what they have to do, right? So again, they're going to destroy each other's homes. They're going to um, pillage, you know, all everything that you could imagine. It's going to look like the forever purge out here. So again, spoil their goods because of a lack of bread and great tribulation, right? So again, there'd be a lack of food, lack of resources, right? And you already see that continue to manifest, right? Whether the uh, aforetime, early within the past few years, you see everything from train derailments to food processing plants and whatnot being burned down and, and, and uh, just recently you had the quote unquote cyber attack, right? Where it affected uh, water supplies, right? Or water, uh, if you will, uh, these natural resources, right? Okay, they claimed that it was, I believe they said it was Iranian or Iranian, however you want to pronounce that. Hackers that had affected um, the ability, I believe it was on the East Coast, for people to obtain running water, right? And again, those are just examples and, and it's just the forms of gradualism, if you will for what's ultimately coming. But again, this is all being uh, sanctioned by the Heavenly Father, right? So let's go to this lack of bread now, right? So it says, Second Ezra 6 and 22, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty, right? So again, everything that's taking place here on the earth, that's gonna affect different food supplies and whatnot, resources, right? So again, we see what's taking place when it comes to the natural resources supplies of, of whatnot, whether it be grain, whether it be different food processing plants being burned down, right? Uh, and I'll go into a few articles here as well. But another thing that's just recently taken place now are the these uh, incidents uh, regarding bridges and whatnot, right? What took place in Baltimore. I believe there was another one. Uh, I can't recall the state. I believe it might have been near Kansas, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be corrected on that. But the point being that those are also, um, also affecting you know, could potentially affect the, the supply chain and whatnot. So now let's let's go into a few few things here. So this is per X slash Twitter at Mario Nalfal. All right, for brothers that may may want to check it out. It says uh, breaking it says uh, this pestilence here. Okay, so it says affects cows in six states. All right, so it says um, just ten days after the bird flu was detected in Texas and said it posed no risk of endangering the nation's milk. It's been confirmed that dairies in New Mexico, Ohio, Michigan, Texas, Kansas, and Idaho have found the disease spreading in their livestock. While Texas officials reported that a farm worker has suffered from the virus, CDC reports the risk to humans remains low. Now, again, I'm just reading per uh, verbatim. Okay, just reading that verbatim. Okay. Now, let's go continue on in that same same uh, theme if you will disclosed tv twitter x report says largest u.s fresh egg producer halts production at texas plant after bird flu found in chickens about 1.6 million laying hens and 337,000 pullets were culled or killed however you like to pronounce that it's like if mis mispronouncing that if i did but the point being again you're seeing that effect you know, whether it be poultry supplies and then ultimately if it affects cows and they're pushing it even further. Right. And ultimately, the Heavenly Father has, has this narrative and and these things taking place as well. Now, uh, just just per the X slash Twitter, just for context and, and food for thought, if you will, uh, it says uh, thousands of penguins found dead on island in Antarctica. Researchers investigating whether H5 and one bird flu is involved per Reuters. Right. So, again, you see that then they're claiming this thing is spreading. It's affecting different, you know, species, if you will. Right. So on and so forth. So, again, we'll, we'll see how that continues to develop and ultimately how the Heavenly Father continues to have that develop and manifest. 
CNN.com. Now, this is what took place in March, right? Early March it says wildfires have devastated the Texas cattle industry and the effects may be long lasting, right? So it talks about here, uh, you know, flames burning. It was, I believe now is the largest, if not the second largest, the largest fire in, in Texas state history. Now it says right here, uh, this state, I'll, I'll go down a little bit further in the article, where it says the state is home to about 4.1 million beef cattle, according to David P. Anderson, professor of agriculture economics at Texas A&M University, and more than 85% are in the panhandle, according to the Texas Agriculture Commissioner, Sid Miller. Right. So again, there was a, a major um, amount of the, the the cattle in, you know, of, of Texas, right, major uh, percentage of them in the panhandle area and much of that area was was torched was burned down right so it says uh yep it says farmers and agricultural experts say the wildfire will continue to affect the cattle industry for years to come in addition to the short-term effects of cattle killed and grievously injured by the flames there will be lasting repercussions as herds cultivated for years struggle to recover and traumatized cows fail to reproduce, right? Further down, there's no grass. There's no water for the livestock. We've lost over 3,000 head with a very, which is a very small number that will double or triple easily. We've got cattle that we're going to have to euthanize because to the damage to their hooves, their udders, we'll just have to put them down, right? And that's something that that one individual stated, right? However, again, the numbers are are subject to change and more more than likely increase, right? So I just want to grab one uh, one small snippet here that I, that I found interesting as well, where it says uh, the cattle business in Texas is worth an estimated fifteen point five billion dollars, making it by far the most profitable agriculture commodity in the state, according to the state's Department of Agriculture. It says there are millions of cattle across the Panhandle, specifically with some counties counting more cattle than people among its residents, the department reported, right? So that is a major amount of income, right? That is a major amount of business. And people, again, that's gonna continue to lead to what? A lack of bread, a, la a great tribulation, these perilous times, these harsh times that people are gonna face financially, not only, <laughs> not only among many things, right? But they're gonna be distraught and, and whatnot, and they're gonna struggle financially, right? And then again, many people, it's only going to continue to raise the price of it and so on and so forth, right? And or the lack of availability for many people. So I'm repeating 2nd Edges 622. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. Verse 23. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall suddenly be afraid. And at that time, friends shall fight one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein the springs of the fountains shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run right which goes into civil war again these race wars these riots forever purge once again i'll use that reference and and uh, the lack of available resources right and then that is also happened a fourth time right for for um for our people, right? And this is again, as the scriptures say, there's no new thing under the sun. So Ezekiel, the fourth chapter, Ezekiel 4 and 16. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Ezekiel 4 and 16, where it says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. That's right, because again, they're gonna they're gonna be vexed. There's gonna be very low amounts of natural resources, so that they're gonna be, you know, people are gonna be very uh, mindful of not only the amount they have, but the amount that they can consume, right? Because of the lack of availability, right? Verse seventeen says that they may want bread and water and be a stony one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Right for sin upon sin, lawlessness, the rebellion against Yahweh Shem Shai, the Heavenly Father, many of our people, as well as the wicked, these other heathen nations. Excuse me, Salakia, Salakia for that. Are are gonna face um are gonna face these harsh times, right? And again, it's gonna get to a point where 
there's going to be cannibalism, right? There's going to be many different uh, pe people that are in complete desperation. And it's going to get very bad. But the Wadi Abashi Masha'i, Lord's will, that we may be of that remnant, the elect, the, those that are worthy of having the hedge of protection, right? Predestined from the foundations of the world to, to make it through these perilous times, Jacob's trouble, so on and so forth, that we may be found worthy of, of that mercy, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, and verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Right? So those who, again, going back to Second Ezra, speaking of their hurtful works are fulfilled, right? Uh, wickedness has polluted, exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Right. Well, again, there was many of our people in particular, right, as well as, again, the other nations that abounded in wickedness and that chose that which was not delightful in the eyes of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. Right. So, again, they're going to be numbered to the slaughter. Right. They're going to be numbered to the sword. Now, continue on in verse 13, Isaiah uh, 65, 13 says, Therefore, thus saith Adawan Yahweh, the Lord power, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. That's right. They're going to be ashamed because ultimately they chose, again, wickedness. They did not choose to repent and obey Yahweh Bashim Shai to the best of their ability. No, they, they uh, wanted to do as thou wilt, right? The Aleister Crowley, that uh, in living color spirit, right? You can do what you want to do. Well, guess what, man? Hey, they're going to have a hefty price to pay. Now, continue on in uh, Isaiah 65 and 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So right. they're going to be howling. They're going to be crying. They're going to be lamenting. They're going to be completely vexed and confounded. Yet I don't want to desire, Lord willing, Lord pleasing, that the true sincere hearted believers of Yahshua Allah may be of that number okay the the remnant the elect the hopeful elect remnant the hopeful house of david to be given that mercy once again right but i'm saying matthew 24 and 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold right in reference to again friends shall fight once again one against another right people against people right so on and so forth invading each other's homes right so again we're seeing that take place now but how much more so when there's again power grids fail telecommunications go down you know it's it's martial law jacob's trouble so on and so forth right the worst times that are ever going to befall the earth right so yeah this is you know it's going to be it's again that quote-unquote survival of the fittest but really it's the al bashi mal shai who, who he deems will will be uh given the hedge of protection or not now matthew uh st matthew 24 13 but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved, right? So your faith, your works, right? They will follow you. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. That's right. And when this gospel, this word, gospel meaning good news, is going out all across the four winds of the earth. And I don't know how to say, we, we be those that can endure unto the end to, to be saved. Right. And, and so that's why it's, it's ever important to continue to blow the trumpet, sound the alarm and let our people know that the, the kingdom of heaven draweth nigh and that Lord's will that, again, we, we may be uh, found worthy of that salvation. Right. So that's why we must continuously exhort comfort and, uh, and edify, you know, whether it be admonish, rebuke, reprove, so on and so forth. All things that are profitable to the spirit that pertain to salvation. Uh, pertain to the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. I don't know if this is how we may endure. So with that, you know, I think I'm gonna close out and uh you know the water you know for the brothers and sisters that may have tuned in the water Yahweh Bashim Yahshai first and foremost and this has been another installment of upon my watch plagues and calamity. So keep pushing strong in the spirit and keep believing keep fighting the good fight of faith. I don't know if this is how Lord's will we are one day closer to the kingdom. So with that I want to close out by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash, Kol Hololim La, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Waha Racha, Kodash, 
Since their honor, salutation, respect unto the sincere elders, apostles, bishops, teachers of GMS, Great Millstone, as well as the like minded elders and brothers under the umbrella, pushing this truth to sincerity all in one accord across four ones of the earth, making your bodies a burnt offering, a living sacrifice, for your lives and freedoms to do so. All right. So, shalom unto you. Wa Yahobashim Shabrakatam, unto the hopeful life remnant, the hopeful house of David, sincere men, women, and children, brothers and sisters, Akim and Aqua, say shalom. Keep fighting the good fight of faith once again, and the blessing of election be upon you and your households to the sincere hearted. So shalom. As always, close out with curse on Babylon America. Abad Babal, DTA Sum, Kwam Yashirala, and Shalom. The water, once again, you are appreciated. Shalom.